Let's go! Kamarion Pimpton signs with LSU. This was the only flip of a very productive early signing day. The only player that actually flipped his commitment from LSU to another school was Dalen Austin, and that was expected. So today we're actually going to focus mostly on this new signee, someone that some of you are familiar with. This had been rumored for a while that this young man was going to end up picking LSU over Vanderbilt. Very interesting. So obviously, this guy has a really, really, really fun highlight tape. The first thing that really stood out to me was all these jump ball contested catches, right? He is a 6'6 tight end who has just this ridiculous catch radius, right? I've never seen the word radius used so much since my seventh grade geometry class, but this guy has it. And over the past couple of weeks, you've seen LSU bring in some long strider, high point catchers at the tight end position. And Pimpton, just like Jackson McGohan, was just like him in many ways, right? A really tall, lanky playmaker. Boom, I'm looking at you. Yes, you right now. So if you go to the PHL Patreon, I got a few extra recruiting nuggets for you. Players that I am loving that LSU signed for the 2023 cycle. But let's actually hear from the man himself, Brian freaking Kelly. I know that I've had somebody with his uh, raw athletic ability. And certainly there's work to be done as it relates to the physicality of the position and whether he's going to be an inline. We want to develop our tight ends as complete tight ends, where they can do everything, where they're not just a guy that you can, you know, split out. You know, we want them to be able to get in there and and be part of a, you know, a blocking scheme as well. So, and he's committed to that, you know, and that's the w one thing that, you know, as, you know, we talk about developing tight ends, my background in developing Coach Dembrock is, is incredible in the number of tight ends that he's developed. We wanted that for him, and, and that resonated with him. And then, obviously, the other skills that he brings, um, you just can't teach, right? I mean, as you mentioned, his catch radius, his ability to win in one-on-one -on -one matchups um, is going to be exciting to be able to develop. So, obviously, that is very, very, very exciting to hear. Huh? 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 And, uh, look, this kind of looks like Jackson McGohan's tape, right? Just a bunch of absolutely, positively ridiculous catches. Now, if you want to see my Jackson McGohan video, it is uh, linked down below. I'll also link it at the end of this video. You've got to see the catch that this guy made. It is probably the best high school football catch I have ever ever freaking seen it really is that good and you also add in mac markway as the three tight ends um that lsu has committed and then of course the most vocal um lsu tight end commit is actually uh tavion galloway a 2024 tight end that lsu has had locked up for quite some time so what does this tell you about brian kelly well he loves tight ends, and that goes back to his days at Notre Dame where, you know, quite honestly, Notre Dame has been the premier tight end developer in the sport with um, all the tight ends that Brian Kelly got drafted while he was there, whether it be Cole Komet then and obviously Michael Mayer now. So it is very, very, very fascinating. Now, what do I like about Pimpton? Obviously, his catching is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, you, you've heard catch radius plenty of times, but he is a very smooth catcher. He's got a lot of uh, shake and bake to his game. He does break tackles. He is not the fleetest of foot, but, you know, the, 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 the guy that everyone is going to reference him to is obviously Kyle Pitts, right? Any true receiving tight end is always going to get you know referred to as the next Kyle Pitts because Kyle was such a you know unicorn coming out Pimpton obviously has that type of catching ability that level of athleticism that Kyle Pitts had is going to be tough to replicate from any uh tight end but honestly Pimpton does have really 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 high upside so obviously you know in the background you saw him there with his hand in the dirt 
that takes time. It's hard to transition from playing in a two-point stance primarily to a three-point stance. That rep right there, uh, three verticals uh, over the middle, um, that's obviously something that LSU is going to do with him. And look, you know, I, I think for me, one thing that's going to be interesting is that motion right there, right? That's a big part of, you know, modern offense is the tight end kind of becoming an H back cross underneath behind the line of scrimmage. You're either going to block or slip out for a catch in the flats. Those kind of plays, it's good to see on his tape. But as you see, primarily, he is playing wide receiver. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, that is, you know, the big transition, right? Uh, you know, you're lining up out wide and then you are lining up, you know, closer to the line of scrimmage. And let's just say someone that had a really good true freshman season for LSU this past year, Mason Taylor. Um, if you actually go look at his high school tape, there are some instances of him doing some more inline kind of stuff. So that's going to be the big gap, not only for, you know, Pimpton, but also, um, Jackson McGohan, where someone like Mac Markway is more of your traditional tight end, where you see him a lot of the times in a three-point stance and doing a lot of blocking. So, obviously, everything Brian Kelly said is, you know, pretty spot on, and it's going to be interesting to see this young man uh, develop. One thing you do see, he, he does seem to have really good football IQ right there, you know, drifting into a space that was open and being a big, you know, findable target, if you will, for, you know, the quarterback down the field. And I like him finishing on that block right there. Now, in the background, we'll keep the highlights flowing. Let's chat philosophy, okay? The first thing, obviously, is... Yes, LSU is going to want to be a more tight end focused team. That doesn't mean less wide receivers per se. That doesn't mean that LSU is going to be fully committed to more 12 personnel sets, what you normally see from a school like Georgia. In the background, that's actually some really good inline blocking. So it's good to see that. Um, you know, I, 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 and one more thing here, I know I keep referencing this. Those are actually the uh, the Tennessee splits, right? Stacking the receivers out wide, um, and 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 doing that. That was very interesting. I, I really enjoyed watching uh, this offense. Now, um, let's chat philosophy, okay? The first thing that I think that's very interesting is twelve personnel sets. I do think will be more popular. So what that means is. Instead of having only one tight end on the field, you have two, okay? So whenever you hear personnel groupings, the first number is the amount of running backs that are on the field. The second number is the amount of tight ends on the field, and you subtract by five to determine how many wide receivers are on the field just based on those personnel groupings. That's one way to do it. Obviously, that's a very, you know, oversimplified way of, of describing it, but there you go. So does this mean LSU is going to try to run more 12? I think so. I know when BK was at Notre Dame and Mike Dimbrock was at Cincinnati, their final years there, they were amongst the highest when it comes to 12 personnel. And LSU quite simply just couldn't do a lot of 12 or as much as they would have liked to because the tight end room just wasn't really that deep. Now, I know in goal line situations, LSU would honestly much success did some 14 personnel which is one running back and four tight ends uh they banged a touchdown in versus georgia and that said uh they put marcus dumerville who's now transferred in at one of the tight ends and they also uh banged one in versus auburn running that set as well yeah lsu is going to want to do um more of that right because it does give you more scheme versatility and finding the tight ends that are able to do those things uh is honestly hard right so you know for me i i do think it is you know very interesting when you look at someone like uh pimpton you know the more i watch it the more i kind of fall in love with these inline sets and think that he could be a year one guy as a blocker but you know, it's different when you're going up against, you know, high school talent where in the SEC you're going up against, you know, Deshaun Womack, a, um, uh, a Will Anderson, if you will. So obviously, man, I, I'm starting to talk myself more into him, you know, playing year one Pimpton. So, yeah, I will see. I, I, I want to be cautious, though, about the blocking because it is such a big jump. It is so difficult, you know, for tight ends to actually make that jump. And let's be honest, there are very few tight ends who are 
truly transcendent blockers. So yeah, you know, I, I'm really high on Pipton, just uh, the little bit I, I've watched on him. And hopefully LSU can have one of these tight ends play in year one to play alongside Mason Taylor. Now, Let's talk about LSU and the early signing period overall. The good news is, well, we got a bunch of live streams, right? If you're watching this during the premiere, we're going live on Wednesday and Thursday. So be on the lookout for that. And we got some really cool things coming up. That's all I'm going to say. So, uh, and it's pretty big. Now, what I'll say about um, LSU moving forward was this was a really, really good signing period for LSU. Number one, obviously, the Brian Kelly can't recruit stuff is always stuff that will fuel the fire of LSU fans. And that's why Brian Kelly came here, right? It's because of LSU. It recruits itself in many ways. And there are more staffers. There are more resources uh, for you to work with. And, you know, you have the state of Louisiana um, and the, uh, the, once again, the radius, the word radius again. Um, what what was my geometry teacher's name? But anyway, uh, you know, two hundred mile radius, right? Of all the great talent that is within the Baton Rouge region, um, those things all come into play, and that's why Brian Kelly, you know, made you know this move over here. And we'll talk more about different recruits. I want this video to mostly be about Pimpton. Obviously, you know, you you miss on Isaac Smith, no big deal, especially if you think. Uh, Kylan Jackson is a really good player. I do think so. So, yeah, I mean, today was just phenomenal. It really, really was. Would you have liked to have signed more elite, elite top 100 guys? Yeah, of course. But we'll see what happens if more do decide to sign. So, pretty uh, excited about this. This is obviously a really good step forward for, you know, a national championship run. And look, one thing also to keep in mind about this true freshman class is, well, this is double, nearly double, not quite double, um, the amount of high school players and what LSU signed last year. And one thing I will say is Brian Kelly kept to his word about staying on course with signing freshmen. He has said this from day one since he's taken the job, and obviously he delivered in a major way way this year uh, we had a lot of one-year transfer portal players and that's something that brian kelly just doesn't want to fully rely on moving forward so shout out to uh you know bk getting some stuff done on the recruiting trail now something else that brian kelly mentioned in that long press conference was you know the uh the, the media aspect and the creativity of of what it takes to actually bring guys in and If I were to list every recruiting staffer, it would take forever. But, you know, Redmond, Belton, there's so many to name. Um, Wilson, Barham, Arcement, um, even though she's no longer there, Destiny Wilson, uh, and so on and so on and so on. What I will say, and, and this to me is just really, really, really fascinating, is there was something that Brian Kelly did today that I thought was very impressive. So, you know, with the recruiting, there's all these fancy graphics and stuff. Well, those are cool. And and trust me, I I, I love it. But I thought it was very personal that Brian Kelly, after every commit that signed 25 of them, just posted a photo and a brief message, not edited, no anything, of him and the player. And... It wasn't all stage, right? There was some, you know, like him dapping up, you know, DJ Tester before a game or whatever. That honestly was really, really, really cool. And whoever thought of that, whether it was Brian Kelly or whoever else, that honestly sends a very good and authentic message to the team. I'm still trying to figure out who actually did that. Something else, and I, I'll include this at the end. I did not ask for this. I. Still pretty cool. It was a pretty cool moment for me. They did use my voice on some of the uh, recruiting announcements, and that's obviously great. Um, you know, it's pretty cool for the channel. I appreciate you guys uh, even putting me on the radar of the actual um, official um, LSU football media people, and those guys are, you know, the main guys. So shout out to them. I really appreciate that. I was. Um, 
It was really, really cool to see that. So, um, comment down below your, your thoughts on um, Kamarion Pimpton. I'm really excited about this young man's growth and the potential to be something truly special. It is Power Hour LSU. Bam! And tonight, ooh, what are we doing tonight? Oh, chicken quesadillas, let's go.